Hello and welcome to the uh, third lecture on uh, the bespoke systems for Hospedia. Uh, this one's going to look at the personal statement which falls under uh, IT user fundamentals and setting up of an IT system. Those are the sort of two units that we're sort of being combined together as part of all this variety of different evidence that's going on. So what you have to do is uh, complete this um, workbook. Um, it's uh, no screenshots are involved in this. It's all text based. Um, so let's just have a little look, and I'm going to go through the different uh, the different parts that we've got to fill in. So. The first thing obviously is at the top of the screen um, at the moment, some people do tend to forget to put in their candidate name, um, which uh, should be in the box, sorry, rather than out of the box, which I'm rapidly messing up in front of you. Okay, um, obviously the date, and then put in whoever your assessor is. Well, I'm, I'm the assessor for me. So the way this works is um, it's all about what you're doing in your day-to-day uh, job roles, um, and so you should have a lot more expertise than I than I have on the actual subject. But I'm just going to give you some pointers, some things that we've looked at, and some things that we think are the right sort of answers to do. So each, uh, as we're aware, each different sites have got different technologies on them, and so in this first box here, you just choose which technology your site has. So it could be, for example, a T3 site or something like that. So you're just going to fill that in, and then the rest of the questions. Um, are in some ways going to relate back to that. And that's just so that we know what technology you've got on your site and then we can judge the answers accordingly. So, um, looking at the next question, the BSU consists of three separate units. Well, I think that's, um, that's a pretty easy one. So we obviously know it. We, we know it's the arm, the wall box and the module. Um, and so just write, uh, just write a little, a little uh, sentence for each of them describing what their uses are. Moving down to um, identifying two potential health and safety uh, issues associated with setting up or replacing a BSU. Well, there's a whole variety of different things here, and we just want a sentence um, for each one. So, different types of things. Well, obviously, they're, to start off with, they're electrical. So, there are a whole whole bunch of um, potential, you know, around uh, electricity, a bunch of potential safety issues. Uh, I know lots of them are um, working at height. Uh, you know, even though it's a small height, but it's still off the ground, so you can't use chairs and things. You've got to get the right equipment, right ladders and things like that. Um, there's a lot of manual lifting um, in regarding the uh, the box, so you've got to do correct lifting procedures, things like that. There's also the arm. I know that there's some hydraulics in those arms, and um, that there's some definitely potential issues with there. Uh, I remember being told something like you've got to put a screwdriver inside them to stop them from springing up. Um, Anything else I can think of? Um, yeah, just I think that covers those issues really. Um, oh, of course, no, there is one other thing. There is, of course, the um, the fact that you're in a hospital, um, and so you've got uh, people that are you know working. You're working around people that are potentially um, wired up to machines uh, and things like that. And so you're going to need to think about all of the uh, health and safety regarding the um, having the patient there and what implications um, that means to you. So let's move on to the, the next one. Detail an electrical safety check that can be undertaken before removing a wall box or cover. So here you need to talk about what procedure you're going to go through. Um, I believe it involves using a, um, a neon screwdriver. And then what you need to do is just write about what that check is giving you, whether it lights up or not, and how that how that works. And then you'll talk about your um, the policies of what actually happens um, if something is found to have an electrical fault. What you do, who you should report it to. You can talk about whether uh, you wear gloves or not during the procedure, um, and just cover those sort of areas. Okay, so moving down now to um, how would you isolate the power supply on the wall box. Uh, I think that's a fairly simple procedure for you. So uh, just just write a, uh, a small sentence on what you'd actually have to do there. Um, and that shouldn't, that shouldn't be a particularly long answer. That's quite, a, quite an easy one. Uh, we've got um, 
When replacing a module console or module at the bedside, uh, what cables will be connected in order to set up the device correctly? Um, I believe this will vary uh, depending on the type of device it is, whether it's T1, T2, T3. Um, but just think of the different types of cables that are going in. There'll be certain network cables, certain power cables. Just, um, just write about which ones are applicable to whichever um, unit you know, you've chosen at the top here. So this is a case where it's very dependent on what you've, what you've chosen as to uh, what, um, what cables specifically connect to that unit. Um, and then the last, uh, the last question on this, this page um, is when removing a console module, how do you make the arm bracket safe? Uh, and even I that have never worked for Speedia, I, I, I saw pretty quickly that you uh, you stick a screwdriver somewhere, <laughs> so you can just talk about uh, just talk about the correct procedure for doing that. Um, and you could always mention if you wanted to the the importance of why. Um, I think they're quite um, quite powerful the hydraulics inside those arms, um, as we mentioned in the health and safety section. And so um, uh, you know they could always spring up or something like that. Um, I'm now looking at providing a brief summary of how to commission a B, uh, BSU, um, identify any details in the process required. I believe this is different for T2 and T3 compared to T1. Um, so if you can, my advice would be here to talk about the, how it's done in T1s um, because you can write a little bit more about that. You've got the um, accessing PET and the information you need to talk about in PET. Um, Otherwise, I think with just T2 and T3s, I think it's quite um, an automatic process. So the more you could write about T1s there would be better. And it doesn't really matter if you've, um, if you're just write, you know, if you specify T2 or T3 in the top bit, you can still write here, you, you know, just mention that this is about T1s and write a bit about that there. Um, now we've got the, the uh, I didn't mean to move that, we've got the hard reboot process for a BSU. Um, and I think this, you know, this doesn't take much information to write about. Um, I think it's quite a straightforward procedure. Um, maybe you also write about any checks that have to be, or that should be carried out at the same time that you're resetting a BSU. So that's uh, that's some good things to sort of to mention as well at that point. But I don't I don't imagine there's been a particularly long answer to this question here. So moving on down to um, what routine maintenance checks can be carried out in patient, why are these carried out and why are they important? Um, there's a, I think there's quite a bunch of things you can write about in here. Um, you can talk all about um, that um, you get the status and control which uh, as you know changes the colour of the screen um, and so you can describe what the different colours mean, you know, if the screen is black or if the screen is green or if it's red. So just describe what they are. Um, you can then also uh, just talk about something like uh, the operator warnings, um, bleeps, um, and then some things uh, around health and safety. Um, you know, why, why do you have to carry out these regular checks? What's the... So the last question was looking at um, maintenance checks that can be carried out in patient and then the next one goes on to looking at routine maintenance um, of the bedside units that carried out in wards. So um, talk about how often these should be done, if there's a minimum time frame that they should be done in. And then just list some of the um, actual checks that, you're, that you then do when you do them. And then have a think about uh, and just just make a couple of notes about why they uh, why these checks have to be done. You know, I'm sure there's a lot of things around health and safety. Um, there's probably con uh, there's probably some legal obligations. Um, so the question before was more what you can do on um, from patient, and this one is like physical checks that can be carried out and why, uh, when, and where they should be done. So there are four questions left here. Um, we're now on describe the resource systems available within your company to report faults and to provide help on routine issues. So there's a couple of things about this. Notice this one's got um, the sort of the last few questions are 
the ones that we would like the most written about, if possible. Um, so we've got the word describe here, so that's not a small list, you know, we want some actual physical descriptions of what is um, what these are. And so, you know, it'll be around fault logger and obviously service death. So just describe what they are and how those processes uh, work. Now, this is certainly a two-part question and this is quite key. Um, what you then have to do is, once you've described the systems, is explain how these help um, you at work, so how they, you know, think about, so uh, you would describe it as in how would you do what would happen if you didn't have these systems in place, and how they also, so how they benefit you and how they benefit um, the company. So, and we, the main word to look at here is efficiencies, okay? So, how do using these software packages make you more efficient uh, and make the company more efficient? Okay, and we want, you know, we want a little bit of, we, we've got a minimum of 50 words. 50 words is really isn't very much. Um, but just, just, you know, just that's what's going on in that, in that question there. And so moving on to the, the next question. So briefly describe the roles and responsibilities of the IT support staff at Hospedia. Okay, so this, this question should be quite easy for you, um, and we've even already laid out that it's site operators, ASEs, experts, service desk. If you can think of any more that we've missed out, please include those. Um, and just obviously their role and what they are responsible for, uh, and I'm sure by the time you you detailed the the four or five that we've listed there, that um, that will easily cover the uh, the minimum word requirement there. So the penultimate question here is, um, is a bit of a specific question, but we've done it for, for a, a specific reason. Uh, within patient, describe what options can be selected to structure data results within list request. And what you have to do here is you have to just, part of the course, it, uh, it asks you to talk about uh, this idea of structuring data and the data results. And so we want to know the sort of different options that are available uh, because we think that the list request is one of the is one of the areas where you you have the maximum ability to structure all sorts of different queries and results and things like that. So talk about all the different options that you've got within the list requests um, and how they work uh, in a sort of a data structuring type of way. Um, and then this is a, again another two part question. And then how does um, using patient improve personal and company processes okay so a little bit like um, a little bit like the ones where uh, the previous uh, couple of questions ago we've got improved company efficiencies this time we're just looking maybe at processes um, and what processes are put in place uh, that patient uses and so the last question here is um, what guideline security practices do you follow to ensure patient details and others remain secure and confidential on patient. Um, and it can, it, it's just the idea here of security practices, so talk a little bit maybe about username and passwords, um, think of any other security practices that are in place, and what guidelines get passed down to you from Hospedia um, on patient details and that data, you know, how, you know, how is it kept, um, what's the process maybe when a patient leaves, how, how do you ensure that that patient data uh, and that you know that information about them isn't just on display or could get leaked across? And so there we go. We've sort of um, whizzed through these different questions. I've been trying to give you pointers to them without giving you the actual answers themselves. Obviously, um, that would be a bit uh, make make life a bit too easy. Um, if you've got any questions, please um, email either. Please email your assessor. Um, and uh, thank you very much.